Hello, welcome back to T Rosa Bed and Breakfast, where today I shall be cooking a cassoulet for you on behalf of Cafe de Chanois. Uh, cassoulet is a dish which comes from um, the Arabian kind of countries, which then came with the spice and silk roots all the way through up into uh, France. Uh, and is most famously now for being a dish from Toulouse, mainly due to the fact that they had loads and loads of um, goose to get rid of uh, after they'd made um, all the foie gras. Okay, so here's going to be the recipe. So here are the ingredients for today. So we're going to be using some butter beans. I've already uh, soaked them and cooked them off, but you could just buy them ready cooked in a tin if you liked. Um, we have some finely sliced celery, some chopped tomatoes, chopped onions, chopped carrots, chicken stock. Then the meat I'm going to be using today, because I don't have goose, so it's going to be duck breast. Uh, we have smoked lardons, which can either be the regular smoked lardons or can be like pancetta if you prefer. We have some goose fat. We have saucisson fresh, uh, which is kind of like a salami that hasn't been... Um, are dried and then we have some Toulouse sausages, uh, some garlic and the herbs we have today is parsley, thyme and a touch of salt and pepper. Into a large frying pan or into a heavy bot pan, it can be a big saucepan but this is the biggest pan I have at the, at the b, &B. Uh, we want to put uh, 150 grams of goose fat, if I can get it out. and the smoked lardons and we're gonna start by sweating those off um, so I'll start sweating them off and getting them cooking and I should come back to you for the next part so this has been cooking for about five minutes now so we've just kind of started it getting it all cooked and, and through um, it's a long process to do this one because uh, we want it all to be very tender and so on. When you're cooking off different types of meat, if you cook something off very quick like a steak or bacon, um, then you either cook it off really really fast or you cook it off very very slow. So in this one today we're going to be cooking it much slower. So it's on, a, it's on a low heat, not on a high heat. And we've got the bacon, uh, lardon, smoked lardons go in there, so again the flavour in there. Into there, then we're gonna add our chopped onions, our chopped celery, and our chopped carrots. And again, we're gonna cook these off for a further 10 minutes, uh, just to get them all nice and tender before we go on to the next thing. Uh, as, as, you, as you're going along with this, you keep filling the pan up, but then you kind of reducing the, the, the water bringing in more and more flavour uh, so you get really good strong flavours um, so the pan will be good, getting very full then going down a bit then filling it up a bit further and then going down a bit so in about five or ten minutes I'll come back to you and show you how the carrots onions and uh, celery are coming on so I've been sweating down the carrots, onions, celery and lardons for another 10 minutes and uh, as you can see it's starting to come all together like here uh, and at this point I want to add two teaspoons of, uh, oh, two teaspoons, it's like five garlic cloves that have been crushed so it's about two full teaspoons of garlic and I get that into there and get that frying off. You don't want to put the garlic in too early because otherwise it'll, it'll burn and, and then it'll taste kind of slightly bitter so you kind of want to put it in at this point. Also into there I'm going to add the two duck breasts and um, I've chopped them into small pieces. You could leave the skin on if you like. Personally I don't like the skin on there because I feel it goes a bit <laughs> so I take the skin off but it's down to your own preference. Again, just get that all kind of stirred in. You could use any meat you like in this. You could use chicken, you could use pork, you could anything really that takes your fancy. Because with a casserole, you can add any meat you want, any 
vegetables you want really. It's just this is the one that I do because this is closest to the uh, recipe that I was given from a, she a chef in Toulouse. Okay, so again, we're gonna fry this off for the next five minutes and I'll come back to you again. So we've been frying this uh, for about another five minutes since we kind of uh, last kind of put the, 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 the duck into the sauce. Now I'm going to add the two tins of chopped tomatoes. And, and a green dip that I forgot to tell you about, which is a glass of white wine. This time not for the chef, unfortunately, but for the cassoulet. I have uh, added all the ingredients and all the weights underneath at the bottom. Look down underneath the video and you'll find all the weights and all the measures and everything. And I've remembered to put the white wine into that one, even though I forgot to put the white wine in uh, my uh, initial film where I showed you all the recipe and all, uh, all the ingredients. That's great. We'll come back to you in about 20 minutes when this has started cooking down um, and we'll start adding stock and so on. So this has been cooking away for about 20 minutes. As you can see, a lot of the liquid is reduced. Um, at this point, you kind of want to keep stirring it as you go in, like every four or five minutes, because you don't want it sticking to the bottom of the pan. Uh, but as the liquid has started to reduce, what I'm going to do now is add some more liquid. Uh, so I'm going to use about half of the amount of chicken stock to start with. It's going into there. And again, I'm going to keep stirring this and cooking it off uh, for about another 20 minutes until I add some more liquid again when I'll come back to you. So as you can see, we've continued reducing and reducing and reducing the liquid whilst uh, keep stirring to make sure that the dish doesn't stick and that the food is kind of constantly able to continue going. I'm now going to add the last or the second pint of the uh, chicken stock and at this point I'm also going to add the parsley and the thyme. Uh, you can use dry parsley, you can use uh, fresh parsley except yourself and again with the thyme you can use fresh or dry. Uh, so I'm just going to pop all those in there and give them a good old stir. Get them all mixed in and keep it going and I shall come back to you in another 20 minutes. Uh, when we've reduced further along. So from be the beginning, so far, we've been about two hours um, cooking this. So we kind of cook, reduce, cook, reduce, cook, reduce. Every time you're reducing, you're intensifying the flavor and softening the meat. So the meat becomes really, really te uh, tender because of the, the liquid, because of the slow cooking rather than fast cooking. So, a bit like lockdown, cooking a cassoulet goes on for a very long time. I've been stirring and reducing and stirring and reducing. But don't worry, just remember... But I know we'll meet again some sunny day. So after I finish singing and calm back down, settle my nerves with a few Valium, a glass of wine, I'm uh, ready to put in my beans. So we're going to pour them all in there and stir them away. It starts getting a bit full now, so we kind of want to take our time as we do this. I'm stirring and folding the beans in. Personally, when I make a cassoulet, I kind of like to make it today but serve it tomorrow. That way it gives time for all the beans and all the flavors to really mature and become better. Really with any casserole that you make, whether it's coquevin or buffon d'aube or any different ones, it does always taste better the next day. Okay. I'm also going to add into there my Toulouse sausages and my pork sausage. I'm 
and again just bring this all up cook it through be careful as you're doing this one because obviously you don't want everything to go everywhere with the other meat uh, we've cooked it for a long time but with the sausages they've already been cooked off so they are cooked as they go into here so really you're just kind of wanting to warm it through and um, get it uh, nice and hot and ready to serve uh, this amount of castellate I've done here which is a really big pot is uh, enough really for about six really hearty portions if you like me and you like to overfeed people um, or you can have it uh you know for uh eight people or it would cook you know a really good meal for everybody but at the b and because we've got a lot of guests who are stuck away from home and can't get back to where they live in the world some from south africa some from thailand <laughs> we have people from um iceland i mean the country not the shop uh so i'm doing this big castle today to treat them all for ve day uh here we go, so that's our casserole. And I would serve this just with a nice big bread roll or some French stick and butter, just to kind of wipe up all the kind of lovely flavors and juices off your plate. I'll show you later how I present this when I kind of put it, but at the moment I'm just letting it cook through. So here's the dish when it's uh, finally kind of prepped up. So I would recommend serving this with a nice bread roll, as I said, so some French stick, some butter, just go on the bread roll because I'm really greedy, a nice glass of white wine, and enjoy. I hope you've enjoyed me cooking this for you today, and I look forward to our next week's version of Something We Cook. I was thinking maybe doing something different for you, maybe some tapas, or maybe something like a paella uh, from the time I've spent in, in Spain. Okay, enjoy. Bye-bye.